um, we would love to hear from you that way. Awesome. Well, I think we can go ahead and get started here. And if anybody else trickles in, Erin, we'll let them um, into our into our meeting here. But um, again, good morning and welcome everyone to Windows on Waterloo. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Paige Price and I am the program manager here at the Waterloo Community Foundation and our host each month for these Windows on Waterloo presentations. So this morning, we are so pleased to have Johnny Hansen joining us, and she will be sharing with us today about the services and the resources that the Hospitality House and the Waterloo Warming Center um, provide to those who are experiencing homelessness in our community. And so um, as we approach kind of these colder months, as crazy it is to think that we're already there in the year. Um, it's always a time where we think about those who are in some of those difficult situations, and it's nice to know about the resources that are available um, in our community for them. So we hope to have time at the end of Johnny's presentation to do some Q&A. And so you can send any questions that you have throughout her presentation into the chat and we'll save all those for the end, or you can hold your question until the end if you would like to unmute and say it out loud or put it in the chat at that time. But um, we will just address all of the questions um, at the end of the presentation. So with that, I will turn things over to Johnny. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much and thank you for inviting um, the people that are on and the people that will be looking at this later to learn about um, both the Hospitality House and the Warming Center here in the Cedar Valley and maybe get a little bit um, of a broader idea of homelessness that, that we're seeing here in the Cedar Valley right now. Um, Hospitality House is a daytime shelter and so we are open um, six days a week. Um, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 until 4 p.m. And then we're open on Saturdays from 9 until 12.30. So um, we are, again, the daytime center for them to come um, and get resources. We open December 15th of 2009. So we will be celebrating 13 years um, coming up here real soon. Um, Father George Karnick, Jason Holt, and I um, were the three that started the, the hospitality house. Jason and myself continue with Hospitality House, and um, Father George has retired and is in Dubuque, so he is no longer active with this. Um, I am the executive director here, and we do have um, an advisory board. Um, we have Dan Trelka um, and um, Chris Schwartz from the Blackhawk um, Board of Supers. We have Dave Metertes. Um, who is with Blackhawk and Grundy Mental Health, Jackie Preston, um, who is with Pathways, Rachel uh, carter Shadel, and she was with HACAP until very recently, and now she is the director of the um, community, um, um, uh, community Development in Iowa City. So, but Rachel is still active with us. She had worked um, with us very closely with the um, homeless vets that were in our area. Um, we have Dusty Bankston, um, Jean Wolfenhauer, Bevan Tim Lanigan, Shannon Frost, Bob Delegardell, and Kathy Cunningham. So that um, is who is in our advisory group. Currently, we serve about 25 people that are homeless in the Cedar Valley on a daily basis. Um, we provide a new lunch. Um, we serve lunch every day from 11.30 to 12.30, um, six days a week. We mostly do it for people that are in a homeless situation, but um, we also do it for those people that are food insecure and marginalized in the neighborhood. So we don't turn people away when they come in that are hungry. Um, we have a free clothing giveaway room um, where we're able to um, help them get clothing. Most of the people when they come in and they're um, homeless, 
they come with very little. Um, you know, they come with a high V bag and that pretty much has their belongings in it. So um, we are very, very lucky that we have community support that gives us um, really very nice and um, wonderful donations to hand out to the people. We pride ourselves on the fact that we want them to have pride in themselves. So we hand out nothing that is something that we wouldn't wear ourselves. Now, we don't want them to wear anything holy, anything with stains, any of that kind of thing. So we're, we're very fussy with, um, with what we give away with our clothing. They can do laundry here um, if they need to. They um, are able to take showers here, which are two very important things for people that are homeless. Um, they don't have generally the money um, if they're living outside or they're living unsheltered to, to go to a laundromat. Um, and they don't, of course, have shower facilities. So that's, that's two of the big things that, that we do here. We give away backpacks. Um, we partner with a couple local churches. And then we have um, people that just bring in donations of backpacks. Backpacks are extremely important to them because, like I had mentioned, they come with a high sack. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't imagine carrying everything that I have every day in this, this Heidi bag um, around. I mean, it's just not, not a good thing. And so we give them these backpacks and so they can keep their personal paperwork in it. They can keep their medicine in it. Um, they don't have to leave their meds back in the shelter if they happen to be staying in a shelter. They can have those with them at all times. We give away tents. Um, <clears throat> tents are big um, in, well, both summer and fall for people that are staying unsheltered. Um, we have two overnight emergency shelters in um, the Cedar Valley on a year-long basis. That's the Catholic Worker House. And I believe with both their houses, they can take 18 men. Um, and then we have Salvation Army Men's Shelter, which houses 18 men, I believe, 16 or 18. And then we have the Salvation Army Women's Shelter. So as you can see, we don't, we don't have a lot of shelter space for um, people that are in a homeless situation. So that's where the tents come into play. Um, we hand those out, we give them sleeping bags, um, blankets, we always have a blanket box on our front porch here at Hospitality House. And it um, generally, most mornings, it's empty. Um, and it's people that are sleeping outside that they come all hours of the night and grab a blanket in order to stay warm. And that is pretty much um, year round is what we see with that. We give away personal care products, um, shampoo, deodorant, body wash, so razors, um, all those kinds of things, uh, things that, that they would not be able to purchase on their own. So um, we give that away to the people that are homeless and to the people that are marginalized. So we have probably monthly, we have people come in and get those things. Um, so we're very, very lucky with um, the ability that we have to give those things out. We give away thousands, and I do literally mean thousands of pairs of socks. Um, home, socks are important to homeless people. Homeless people walk. I mean, they walk all the time. That's pretty much their mode of transportation is their feet. And so um, their socks get wet, they get dirty, and they get holes in them. So we have been very blessed to partner with two sock companies. Um, besides the socks that we get from the the donations from the public. We have partnered with both Divvy Up and with Bombas. And Bombas has a program where for every pair of socks that you purchase on a retail basis, they give a pair of socks to a homeless shelter. And so we have been partnering with Bombas for I think the last five years, four or five years. And we get about eight to 10,000 pairs of socks a year from them. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. And um, then we also partner with Divi Up. And Divi Up is a similar company. It's based out of Florida. I don't know how that's going to work now with um, the hurricane that just went through down there, unfortunately. But um, they were a company that was started um, 
as a dream from a couple um, college kids doing a project. And they kind of modeled after Bombas, buy a pair, get a free pair. So they were the same thing. We were getting probably six to 8,000 pair of socks a year from Divi Up. So add those two numbers up, and that's a heck of a lot of socks that we're providing in the Cedar Valley. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's so fun. It's just so fun to see people's face when they ask for socks and they get these brand new socks, you know, and, and Bamba socks are so, they're so comfortable and they're so thick and, and soft and cushy, you know, and, and we take that for granted. You know, we, we take, oh, we need new socks. We go um, out to the store. Well, there's hardly any stores anymore, but we're going to go out to the store and we're going to buy some socks. Uh, our, our people don't have that option. So um, they get, um, they get really, really nice socks. Um, and I'll kind of go into, um, I'll sidetrack here for a moment. One of the things that um, we were doing pre-COVID and we're going to get back into doing it this fall is we had a Friday night um, event um, every Friday night and we called it Socks and Sandwiches. And so there is no community meal on Friday night to feed people um, that are food insecure or um, in a homeless situation that are not in the shelter. So they could come in here between five and seven and they could get um, a sandwich sack. And we had sandwiches, uh, fruit, fruit cups, pudding, um, granola bars, um, snack items, everything in the sack. And then they got socks too. Um, and then they could pick out personal care products. We would have um, clothing set up on clothing tables and they could actually shop. So it was kind of a Friday night expedition for them. That, that they could um, do. And it was something that we created um, to help them. So then COVID came along and, and we tried doing it for a little while and, and then it kind of went by the wayside. So that's gonna be resurrected this fall. So we're real excited about getting back into socks and sandwiches. Um, one of the other things that we do, um, we give away coats, hats, gloves, scarves, Kittens, all those good things in, in the fall and the winter. Um, so we um, partner with um, a couple churches, and they are very good about um, taking up donations for the hats and the gloves. Um, long underwear is a big thing that we give out, and that's a, a big requested item. Um, you know, and one thing we don't think about is shoes. And um, I guess in my mind today, shoes is, is kind of front and center. We've given out three pair of shoes already and, and brand new shoes. Um, we partner with Thompson Shoes um, here in Waterloo and they are just the most awesome company that you could ask for. And so um, a couple of times a year, they'll give us their excess um, surplus. And um, so we have kind of a shoe area of our giveaway room and um, Oh, two, one guy came to me this morning. It's kind of a side note. He said, oh, look at my shoes. And I mean, he had a whole blowout, of them, you know, and, and he said, um, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you know, it's, it's these things where I said, I'll see what I've got. You know, what size do you wear? And honestly, it, it, it's a God link um, because generally we have the size that they need. This morning, all three people that needed shoes I had their exact same size, their sizes. They all got brand new shoes. Two of them got New Balance tennis shoes. Um, one of them got a pair of um, Timberland boots, um, work boots. He was going off to work. So it's just, you know, it's these things that the community um, surrounds us with um, that we're able to do that we couldn't do without um, the village. And it does take a village, you know. Um, I just, I, I, I don't know what to say other than that. We have got a wonderful village of support here that, that helps with those things. Um, think about being homeless and think about not being able to get mail. Where do you get your mail? What do you do? Uh, the postman doesn't go down under the bridge, doesn't deliver to the third park bench in Lincoln Park. Um, you know, he just doesn't. So we give them an address. Um, and so they can get their mail here, which is huge. And it's very important because they can keep up on top of doctor appointments, um, legal notices, um, 
you know, fam, uh, every once in a while, somebody will get something from family, um, social security information, if they're applying for anything, disability, any of those kinds of things, their mail can come here and, and it's safe and public come and pick it up. So um, that, that is a, a big thing we do. Um, we take phone messages for them. Um, and we have a message board, so they know to look at their message board when they come in and see if they have a phone call. Um, I think a, a, a big thing that we do here at Hospitality House, and uh, that is we try to gain their trust. Everybody has a story. Every, every, every single person, um, I don't care who you are, you have a story. And um, we evolve from that story. Um, our story is not always good. It, it has peaks and valleys, and we understand that, and we don't judge them, um, and, and we want them to know that. We listen to them. We um, give them the dignity and the respect that they deserve as a person. We try to help them move forward. Um, we don't want them to sit and ruminate over their past and what, what happened and what they did. And, oh, my God, everybody is going to think I'm a horrible person. No, 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 no. Come on. Everybody has a story. Let's move forward. We'll move forward together with you. And so I think that is one of the most important things that we do here. And that's one of the most important things that our volunteers work with here. Um, we meet them as they are. Um, you know, many of them come with addiction um, issues. They come with um, mental health issues. Um, we provide them a safe, secure place to have temporary shelter. And that's both um, hospitality house and warming center. I'll get into the warming center in a, in a little bit here. But it, it's a place that we have resources for them. Um, we have community partners. Um, we have a staff of volunteers. We have peer support people that help out daily here. People that have been in their same shoes but have moved forward, that um, actually are now sustainable. They have a job, they have an apartment, they, they have moved beyond their past. And, and that is so important that we can show that to the guys that are sitting in the living room that are so down on themselves. And um, you know, we, we want to be that, that, that wind that lifts them up, that spirit that, that lifts them up, that says, you know, you are worth it, you are. Um, and we can help, and we're going to help get you some supportive services um, to achieve the potential that you can have. Um, yeah, you know, whatever it was that brought you into a homeless situation, and there's many things that do, you know, substance abuse, um, mental health, there can be um, a loss of job, um, uh, sickness, illness, divorce, um, you know, perhaps they were living with a parent, perhaps a parent passed away. You know, we've, we've seen that happen. Um, we have, um, we've just seen all kinds of people um, come into the homeless situation. Homelessness knows no class. It knows no class of people. You can't say it's low class people that become homeless because it's not, not at all. Um, somewhere here I have, yeah. I want to share this just for just for a minute. I kind of um, we had probably about five years ago. We had a person. His first name was David. He was in his fifties, and um, he wrote a little synopsis of of his life. And he says, "I'm a former attorney from Brooklyn, New York. I had a very successful law business in New York and in West Palm Beach, Florida." During the 1990s, when I was practicing in Palm Beach, I had a nervous breakdown and I wasn't able to continue my practice. I was hospitalized for a period of time, given medication for depression. I moved back to New York and moved in with my mother. She was living in a very nice apartment in Brooklyn. She became ill. She required skilled nursing. She moved to a nursing home and because her apartment was rent controlled, which meant the rent could not be and raised while she lived there. Once she moved out and went to the nursing home, the landlord raised the rent to fair market. 
In New York, fair market rent at that time was over 3000 a month. Even though I get a disability check, I couldn't afford that. My aunt owned a property on the Jersey Shore, which she let me move in. 2012, Hurricane Sandy came through and wiped out property. I was able to move in with cousins. It didn't work out because of my mental condition. I'm bipolar and schizophrenic. I became homeless. I went to Cleveland for a while. I read about it on the internet and thought that there was a good homeless shelter there. It didn't work out. I came back to Iowa City because I received my law degree from the University of Iowa and I liked Iowa City. Shelters were full. I rented an apartment for a month. I came to Waterloo. I liked Waterloo. Hospitality houses helped me out a lot. They were very kind to me and gave me what I need to be a real person. They saved my life. Without them, I would be dead. A smart woman once said it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village to help a homeless person become self-sufficient. My village started with hospitality house. And I, I, I don't say that to give us all these great um, affirmations, but I say that because this is what so many people are looking for. And it takes, um, it, it takes someone like that who comes through with um, all this education and, you know, um, was a person that was, you know, very well rounded, very well respected in his profession, and then he became homeless. And it's very humbling um, to sit and talk to somebody like that and to try to understand where they're coming from. You know, so that's part of what we do here is we get to know um, the people that come in our door and um, we, we try to do whatever it takes to um, get them whole and get them sustainable again, to find them the housing maybe that fits into what they need, into their budget, um, that kind of thing. On any given day in Blackhawk County, we probably have um, anywhere from two to 300 people that are actually homeless, um, according to HUD definition of homelessness. And that can include people that are doubled up on someone's couch, um, sleeping in uh, vacant buildings, sleeping in the park, sleeping under the bridge, sleeping in a tent, um, all those different places. So we do have, um, we do have a a homeless situation here in Blackhawk County. Um, as I said before, the shelters are equipped to take um, between the two 36 men. So that started us thinking about um, the warming center. And warming center had cropped up um, in my mind for a long time. And probably five years ago, you know, it's kind of hard with COVID, you lose track of years in there. Um, but I think I'm safe in saying it was about five years ago that we actually um, lost a person. Um, he passed away um, out in the cold, um, huddled into some bushes down by the Elks Club in Waterloo. And I think that was the turning point for us here at Hospitality House when we said, we, we, can't, we can't have this happen. Um, you know, so a group of us started meeting and we said, what are we gonna do? How are we going to do this? Um, and my initial reaction to things is to just jump in and do it. Well, you know, you, you can't always just jump in and do it. So um, we do have to follow some, some guidelines and some protocol. And so um, we were able to um, open at Jubilee Church. And that was in, 2019, the winter of 2019, Reverend Funches said we could use um, the Jubilee Center over there. So we did, we were just gung-ho, we, you know, let's get the, some cots, we'll get sleeping bags, we'll get all this, we got volunteers lined up, we did volunteer training, we, we just had everything worked out, went over there, we opened up, we were there two weeks and the city came and said, mm -mm, can't do this, you don't have a sprinkler system. In, in this area. And you have to have a sprinkler system if you're gonna sleep people. So <clears throat> the city very graciously um, gave us a little bit of time to get out of there. Hawkeye Community College stepped up and um, Jane Ardini, who was, um, I believe, president of the, the trust um, trustees, 
um, or chair of the trustees was a, a driving force in um, us being able to use the um, Hawkeye Metro campus building. So they let us do that. So we moved in there and um, we opened the doors over there and um, we housed about an average of 20 to 22 um, people per night that season, um, our first season at, at Hawkeye. And that was great because the warming center is low barrier. So we um, take people that are under the influence um, that need to, um, don't have another place to go that are not shelter appropriate. So they can't go to the other shelters. So they can come to the warming center. We don't turn anyone away unless I are violent or um, show some, some signs of um, aggression towards um, the, the staff that are there. Uh, it's a great place for the hospitals to be able to send someone. Um, many people that are homeless tend to migrate to hospital um, emergency rooms and hospital lobbies during the wintertime as a place to stay warm. So the warming center gives them a place to send them to. Um, warming center gives the uh, Waterloo PD, Cedar Falls PD, um, I think we even had Hudson PD use us, the uh, Blackhawk County Sheriff's Department. Um, if they find someone um, that is on the street or whatever, they have a place to bring up. Um, if they find someone that um, rather than take them possibly to jail, you know, if it's a public intox, they'll bring them over. Um, we give them a bed. Um, I, and I say bed loosely, we have cots. Um, so it's, it's a good, good um, fit into the community for um, keeping people safe. And that was our whole um, dynamics of the warming center, is to keep people off the street and we don't want them dying in the wintertime. We just don't want that to happen. Um, so we set it up with um, cots. Everybody gets a cot. They get um, a sleeping bag, a blanket um, to put on that cot. Um, they get a tote box, which they can put all their belongings in that they come with. Um, we mark their name on it, um, and, and if they're there, you know, re repetitive nights, they, they get their same blankets and their same everything until um, the end of the season. So um, we have many people that, that are repeats during the wintertime, um, be simply because they don't have another place to go. Um, they're provided um, a light. I don't know if I want to call it a meal, but, but they're provided um, a light snack at night. Um, sometimes the, a church will bring in a, a meal or whatever, mostly on the weekends, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, um, we, we served a meal at the warming center. Um, in the morning, they get a breakfast bag um, with juice, granola bar, um, some kind of a sweet roll, um, whatever. We always have coffee and hot chocolate for them. Um, and so that brings me to this year, while we were at Hawkeye for two years, that worked out great for two years at Hawkeye, and then Hawkeye sold the building. So um, last year we were um, up against a time frame, and so we did it here at the, the hospitality house. So we could not serve that many people. Um, we're not we're not that our facility is not that big. So we were able to get a grant um, from Blackhawk Gaming. Um, and it was a $75,000 grant. And we were able to match that with private donations. So we purchased a building at 1022 West 5th Street. Um, it was the old Comfort Dental building. And we are in the process of renovating that. Um, and we are really very much on target with what's going on. Um, I am really very pleased with, with the renovation that's coming on. You know, it, everything becomes a bigger project than what you imagine it's going to be. You know, you look at it and go, oh, yeah, we'll move, uh, put a couple beds here and this and that. Well, no, it, it's not that. So um, I'm very, very pleased with, with how it's coming and um, our goal, and I know we definitely will meet the goal, is to open on January 1st. Um, and depending on what, the, what December shows for weather, um, 
we now have the ability or we will have the ability to um, open mid-December if, um, if need be, if the weather um, throws a wrench into um, people not having a place to go. But um, so we're, we're really, really, really excited about um, having that. And it's not just going to be the warming center, um, it's the warming and resource center. So we'll, we will be using that building um, year round. It won't be, um, our daytime facility will stay where we're at, which is over on Mulberry Street, but we will use that as a resource center. So um, we will have different functions there. You know, if um, we'll, we're planning to do probably a couple times a month, uh, clothing, clothing giveaways out of there. Um, we will uh, resurrect the socks and sandwiches out of there. Um, at one time, we were doing a community meal downtown Waterloo um, on East 4th Street at 220 East 4th Street. We did that meal for about five years, four years, five, I think about five years. And um, we served uh, 100 to 120 people every Friday night, um, a, a wonderful meal. And that has been hugely missed from the people. Um, the building became not available for us to, to use it any longer for that. But um, it, was, it was great. It, became, it was a community meal. It was people would come. Um, you know, some of them came because it was a social time. They could come and, you know, some of the older people that lived downtown, they could come in and, and meet with their friends. We served a multitude of homeless people that would come and line up um, outside and to come in and eat. Um, we served people that just were food insecure. So it was, um, it, it became almost like a little Friday night family get together for people. So um, we were real happy with that and, and we want to resurrect that. Um, we are hoping that maybe we can have um, an AA meeting or an NA meeting over there once a week um, as a, a resource um, area. Um, different things like that is what we're looking at for that building. So along with the warming center. Um, so those those are um, those are important important things that we're doing. But um, we work a lot with um, people that just they need that handout. Um, it's not always a handout. It's, it's kind of giving them a hand up and um, helping them with, with what their need is at the moment, where they're at, just at this moment in time. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to think real far ahead. We just we have to get through today and then we have to have a plan maybe for tomorrow. And that's kind of what our goal is in working with, with our guests that come in. Um, we, when we opened, um, we talked about having a commercial building downtown. And I kind of dug my feet in um, with George and Jason. And I said, no, no, we have to have a house. Because I said, if you're homeless, you don't have a home. And I said, we want them to feel like this is their home. And so if any of you have ever been here, um, this is like coming to grandma's house, maybe, um, you know. It's, it's an older house, you know, in the middle of downtown Waterloo that, you know, you just come in, you sit down on the couches, you, you know, can watch the TV. It's, 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 it's a home, a home that, that they don't have. And so it's, it's kind of um, heartwarming, I guess, when, when you walk out there and you see them sitting around and they're talking together and, you know, um, that kind of thing. We do um, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Those are big days here. Um, we want them to feel like they have family. And so we always have a uh, Thanksgiving meal. Christmas, we always have Christmas for them. We, um, everybody that comes, we have a sign up sheet and we ask them to sign up. And then we always have some extra bags that everybody gets, everybody gets gifts. And they're not expecting that. They're never expecting that. Um, and that's really what's so much fun is when they come in and, and you know, they think they're gonna get um, a Christmas dinner, which they do, it's always very good. Um, and, and I can say that because I don't cook it, um, but it's, it's very good dinner. And then um, they get bags with, um, oh, they get 
socks and um, really nice um, Carhartt mittens and a flashlight and um, food cards and um, oh, just I mean, long underwear, brand new long underwear, um, a hoodie, a new hoodie. Um, I don't know. There's, there's just they, they get a great big sack, and we have um, a couple really wonderful people that that provide that every year for us. And um, I guess that's that's kind of how the building at the warming center transpired. Was I had somebody who has been a donor for several years. He called me last year and he said, "What do you need for Christmas?" And I said, "I need a building." And he was like, "What?" And I said, "Yep, I need a building." And um, so I, I said, we've gotten a grant, but I said, um, we have to match it. And so he said, well, let me see what we can do. So he and his wife um, took on the project of um, raising the money for the building. And so, again, it was a godly that just came from, you know, someone believing in our mission and someone believing in, in what we do here. Um, this weekend, we're going to take a group of um, high school students out on a little bit of a tour, um, and they're going to see under the bridge where um, homeless people actually stay at night. Um, we're going to go into a couple um, of the places, and then we're going to end up in Lincoln Park, which we kind of call their living room because that's where many of them spend a lot of time. And um, we started doing that that little tour. Um, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, um, we had, when we first opened, we had someone that um, was here and I was sitting there having a discussion with him and, and he said, um, you don't know what it's like to be under the bridge. And, and I said, no, I said, I, I probably really don't. So I asked one of our volunteers if she wanted to go down and stay under the bridge with me. And, and she said, um, sure. And she was um, getting her, her master's from UNI in social work. And so she was an intern here. So we went down on a Friday night. And I tell you, that was a real eye-opening experience because it was not anything that I would ever have uh, imagined. And um, we, we managed to stay down there all night, um, but every noise, every um, everything is magnified a thousand times under that bridge. Um, someone comes down and walks past where you're at, and you immediately, if you were dozing off, you wake up. It's, um, it's somewhat of a scary situation. And so when she and I left that morning, and I dropped her off, and I went home, and I walked in my condo and, and I just stood there for a moment and I looked around and I had, you know, there, there's my refrigerator and I could go to my refrigerator and I could get a cold bottle of water, which I couldn't have down under the bridge. I could turn on my TV and I could see what the weather was going to be that day. I walked upstairs and stood in my bedroom and I lay down on my bed and I thought, oh my gosh, I have this huge king size bed that just felt so good at that moment because I had sat in this old rickety fishing chair underneath the bridge all night long. And I thought how blessed I am that, that I have this. I can walk in and I can run the water in my bathtub and I can take a bath, you know, and it's, it's all by the grace of God that um, I was able to experience that under the bridge. And that has never left me. It never, never, never has left me. Um, and every time I look at someone that comes in here, and one of the first things I always say to them is, so where are you staying tonight? And um, they're like, well, I'm in a shelter or I'm on my buddy's couch or I'm under the bridge. And when they say those words, I'm under the bridge, I know exactly what, what they're thinking and what they're coming from and how they haven't slept. And if you, if you don't have a home and you don't have a roof over your head, it's pretty darn hard to get a job. 
and to maintain a job. Um, if you think about how do you get up and go to work every morning from underneath the branch, it just it, it's almost next to impossible, almost. So um, no, no. Um, most of our um, donations come from donors is how we stay um, afloat. And we do set up help grants um, for food and that kind of thing. We work with the food bank also um, for food deliveries. Um, we've got some churches that are on board with um, donations to us. And um, we just really have a huge village of support out there. So I don't know if there's some questions that I can um, send off here. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions for Johnny, you can go ahead and um, put those in the chat and we will pass those on um, kind of as we wait for some of those to come in. Um, well, more of a comment. It's fun to hear that you guys are receiving Bomba socks because like a year ago, I converted my entire sock collection to Bombas and you never really get to know. I mean, in some of those, like you buy one, they give what, like you don't get to see that. And so to hear that they're partnering with someone in our community is so fun. Yeah, <laughs> I see there was a question on where we got the grant. Um, yes. The grant for, for the warming sensor came from the Blackhawk Gaming Commission. Awesome. Yeah, I think you maybe broke up a little bit when you said that the yeah, first time. So <laughs> thanks, Maria, for, for yeah, clarifying that. Um, John, Johnny, can you speak a little bit to um, kind of what's the, oh, this is so funny. Um, this next question is exactly what I was going to ask, but it's all typed out. Um, so I'm just going to read it instead of going from my brain. So it says, do you see in what do you see in trends on who is most in need of your services, like age, gender, race, et cetera? Okay. Okay. We see, um, I will say it is probably 80% men um, that we see here at Hospitality House. Now, that is partially due to the fact that we don't have a women's shelter downtown. But um, for the big picture of things, um, women are more likely to be able to stay on somebody's couch, family will take them in. They're not as likely to be put out on the street. Um, we're seeing, um, I would say for age, you know, we have had people all the way from 18 to 82 that have been here and that have been homeless. The, the trend um, that we're seeing right now is probably um, people between the ages of 30 and I would say 45. Um, I do have um, someone right now that is late 60s, um, a couple people that are in their 50s. But for the most part, it is people that are um, between that 30 and 45 um, age mark. And um, the race um, or ethnicity, I would say we're probably um, pretty equal on all that right now. Um, I don't, I don't see a trend going one way or another. Um, you know, I see, I see an uptick right now in um, homeless vets, which we were not seeing for um, maybe the last year or so. Um, I had my my VA rep was in the other day, and we sat and talked about it, and then he said, "Oh my gosh, he says he's just swamped right now." So um, we're we're seeing more of that, which is kind of sad. Absolutely. Are you seeing too, kind of to add on to a similar question? I mean, are most people from the Cedar Valley um, and finding themselves in a homeless situation or more people that are passing through or that are resettling in Waterloo or kind of what do you, what are you seeing as far as what they, where they were calling home? We're, we're seeing, um, I would say probably maybe 30 to 40% of the people that are coming in right now are, are Cedar Valley residents or surrounding areas. Um, but a bigger share are people that are transient and that are coming here. Um, we're having um, people that come here because they are hearing that um, the services are better in Blackhawk County. And so they are just showing up and saying, I'm here for housing, I'm here for support services. And in order to have um, some of those services, they have to be a resident of our county. 
and residency takes a period of time. So it's not, it's not just that easy. I mean, they can come here, they can go into a shelter, that, that's not a problem. But to actually get um, some of the housing services, they, they have to be a resident of Blackhawk County. So. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. Um, somebody asked if someone wants to volunteer at Hospitality House or the Warming and Resource Center, who do they contact? Oh, please call me, um, 319-234-1311, or go <laughs> to our Facebook page and send us a message. We would love you. Love it. That was an easy answer. And it looks like Erin put that uh, phone number in the chat, too. So if someone yes, wants I to that. write that I'm down, if they yes. missed you saying it, they can do that. Or yes, you can just look up the names of the organizations on Facebook, too. They're easy to find. Yes. Um, we have another comment here. It says Cedar Valley United Way is doing Socktober. So for the month of October, they have a large box in the downtown Waterloo U.S. Bank lobby. And it's a place where we can donate new socks um, that will be distributed to the hospitality house and to other organizations in need of socks. So that's oh, a fun kind of connection yeah. here with United Way, too. Um, somebody asked Johnny, how many beds were, will there be in the new warming and resource center? Okay, our current diagram is showing um, 18 beds for men, and we will have another um, separate room for women um, that will probably accommodate four beds. Um, if needed, we can accommodate more than that, but that's how we're going to initially set it up is with that number of pots. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We will be having um, we'll be having an open house, um, and that will probably be sometime. Um, I'm hoping end of November, beginning of December for the public. So um, we will definitely send out um, info on all of that. We'll be having a um, a donor appreciation event coming up at the end of October um, for um, people that contributed, but for the the public, it will be um, end of November, beginning of December. So we certainly want anybody and everybody to come and see what that is all about. Because it's, it's a huge, huge um, needed um, addition to our community. Absolutely. Yeah, we will be keeping our eyes out. Thank you for putting that on our radar because we yes. are, I'm sure, all looking forward to, to being able to see this in person and kind of catch yeah. the vision for, for what you're all up to. Um, I know you, you've spoken already to some of the main barriers and challenges that you see um, people facing. So just kind of from your perspective and with the, the people that you're working with, what are some of the most important kind of ongoing services? Like, is it the mental health resources? Is it, um, you know, things that can help people find that stability and take those steps that you were talking about? Because we don't want to, uh, like you said, we don't want to leave people stuck. Um, so from your perspective, what do you think are some of the most important services needed in our community. Yeah, it, it, it becomes a whole circle of things, but, but I think um, mental health is huge, mental health is huge. And if, when we first see them, um, many times they are not on their meds anymore. Um, they haven't had the opportunity to do that or they've um, moved around so much or whatever, it, they just don't go to their, their appointments. Um, so getting them hooked up with mental health treatment is like number one. That is number one. And we are so grateful that we have um, Blackhawk Renzi Mental Health. Um, and we have their homeless outreach coordinator um, who comes through probably three to four times each week. And um, we'll come more often than that if we have somebody that, that just comes in. But he comes in and, and he will meet with any of our new people, um, get them signed up for um, the program over there. Um, talk to them about, you know, do they need to get in right away? Do they need meds? That kind of thing. So I think that really helps to stabilize people if we can get that part of the picture taken. And then we work with um, people's community health clinic on their, their medical end of, of everything that, that maybe is needed and that they're not um, getting taken care of. And so if we can get them healthy in mind and body, um, and then we also worked um, with Pathways with their substance abuse um, 
end of the deal. And if we can get them in some kind of programming for that, or even get them going to um, an A meeting, AA meeting, um, we work with Elevate, um, which is just down the road from, from us um, at the hospitality house downtown, you know, and we can get them into their peer support program. And that is so, so important. And they, they have peer support um, that they can attend at night. Um, they can go down there in the daytime. They can talk to a counselor. They can talk to, um, you know, they can just get all kinds of support services that they need from, from Elevate. So um, we're, those, those are the three things that, that are kind of the most important, if that answered it. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And it sounds like you have some great partnerships with other organizations too, to be able to come around people um, holistically where you can all kind of play a role. Yeah. I know you spoke of a village of support and that's how it kind of works in our nonprofit community too, where um, to really yeah. serve somebody well and meet all those different needs. It takes a lot of different players in, in that. And so um, it's fun to hear how you're working alongside those other organizations too. Yeah, yeah, it definitely takes a village to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of on that same uh, thread, I missed a question earlier. So I apologize, Jessica, that I did not see your question when you originally posted it. Um, but she asked, where can someone bring donations of clothing, personal hygiene items, some of those kind of tangible goods that you were um, referring to? What's the best way for people to donate some of those items? Sure. Um, and that's Hospitality House, and we are at 1003 Mulberry Street. Um, we're on the corner of Mulberry and East 8th Street. And again, we're open from 9 to 4, Monday through Friday, and then 9 to 12.30 on Saturday. So um, that's the best way to do it. And then once, um, once the warming center is open this year, we um, will be dispersing things between the two um, places, you know, um, personal care products, breakfast bags, um, snacks. Stuff. Awesome. And again, uh, for our viewers, Erin posted that address into the chat too, so you can pull from there. But Johnny, at this time of year, are there specific items that are most needed or most helpful um, as we kind of go into the, the cooler months? Yeah, as, as we go into winter, um, long underwear, that, that, that's huge for our people, um, hoodies, sweatshirts, um, coats, um, you know, and, and, that, and we like the coats to be in, in good condition, you know, the zippers to work, um, that kind of thing. Um, we've already started handing out winter coats. Um, blankets, um, we go through just a ton of blankets. And blankets don't have to be new. Um, we just ask that they be, you know, clean and um, in, in halfway decent repair. But, you know, um, blankets are, are very, very big. Um, hoodies, um, coats, stocking caps, those are uh, important, um, gloves, um, and I swear homeless people are like kids, you know, they, they can't keep track of their gloves, so um, we go through a lot of gloves, gloves. Um, but those, those are the, the big things, the things that are going to keep them warm. Johnny, um, here's always a, here's a dangerous question. Pardon? Oh, I was going to, never mind. I want you to continue, but here's also my dangerous question to ask. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, is there anything that sometimes we assume is helpful and it's, um, and maybe any donations that aren't as helpful? Yes, there are. Um, and, you know, people, people always have very good intentions, you know, when they bring in um, what they want to call interview clothes or dress clothes, um, that kind of thing. And, and that's just not, that's not something we can store here. We don't have that big of a spot that we can um, have an entire store for them to shop in. So we, we concentrate on the day-to-day -day things, you know, um, the casual clothes. Um, the other thing that probably is not real helpful is um, when people bring in, um, and we take food, we take food items, um, that's, that's great. We have a little food pantry outside, whatever, but, but we ask that the, the food, um, you know, go through it before you bring it in. 
um, please don't bring in uh, a bunch of expired foods um, that we have to get rid of. Um, we just we just don't don't want to do that, and um, you know it's it's just not a good thing. But um, for the most part, you know, um, and and I can say that if we get something in that we can't use, we try to find another agency in town that we can send it off to, um, that we can partner with, and that we'll take it. So you know, if somebody does bring in um, you know a bunch of um, grandpa's dress pants because grandpa passed away. Um, we'll try to, to send it off to somewhere else. No, that's a great response. I'm sure a lot of our uh, nonprofit folks that are joining us, that <laughs> there's, there's always some of those donations <laughs> that, um, like you said, they're, they're well-intentioned and there's probably the right spot for them. And it's maybe just not for right. um, that specific population at that time. Mm -hmm. So that was... That was great. Um, awesome. Well, we are just a couple minutes out from noon here. So Johnny, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for what you and your team are doing to um, serve those in need who are here in the Cedar Valley. We really appreciate the work that you're doing and um, are cheering you on as you kind of uh, go through the rest of this renovation and approach um, a busy time of year. So. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Goodbye. Absolutely. And we will send out a recording of this presentation. Uh, we'll post it on Facebook. We email it out. So for anyone viewing who wants to share that with others, um, you'll have the YouTube link to be able to do that. Um, and then our upcoming Windows on Waterloo presentation. So we do these the first Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m. So in November, we will have Yolanda Loveless from uh, the Black Hawk County Veterans Affairs joining us. Um, and so I know veterans and their needs came up even today. And so he'll be addressing uh, some of those as well. And then on Wednesday, December 7th, We'll have uh, Jessica Rucker from Main Street Waterloo talking about what they have going on throughout the holiday season um, and what we can expect from them here at the end of the year. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.